All right, guys, welcome to Restoration Mastery TV. Today, we're going to talk to you about increasing your sales to insureds by using our framework of state, story, and strategy. So we're back, yep. And today we're excited to be bringing you a sales question. Apparently a lot of you that are watching are sales and marketing people, yeah. which really excites us. And the reality of our business is everyone's a sales or a marketing person. And that's probably true of most businesses today. Uh, we all need a little bit of sales chops. So today our question actually comes to us from Joe in Miami, Florida. I wish I was in Miami. And he let us use his name, too. Yeah. So he was cool. Yeah. He's got a cool tan. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> God, man. Anyway, uh, Joe says, he, he was he was out about it. He, spent, he says, I'm spending a lot of time going out and doing free estimates for people who end up using my estimate to do the work with a contractor off of Yelp. I'm not sure if it's because I need to close harder or if there's just no way around it. What do you guys think about charging for estimates or should I just close harder? Interesting. So, can you charge for an estimate? Absolutely. However, that's not very popular in our industry. Um, so we have we have certain techniques and methods that we use even before going out to the job site, and, and these are like little secrets that we've kind of implemented in our own company to really help our own staff, like figure out, stop wasting time driving to that loss or to that job in hopes that you might get the job. Why don't we spend the time and speak to the person intentionally and figure out if they're interested in having us do the work or not. So, I mean, one of the things we could do is, you know, part of the examples that we have is we have um, homeowners that call in and say, hey, I've been given three names, you're one of them, and I'd like to schedule an appointment for this day. And, you know, everyone's so ready to just say, yes, ma'am, I'm going to get you on Wednesday. I'll be there at nine and that's it. And no one ever hears from, she never hears from anyone else in the staff. And then now the estimator shows up at 9 a.m. And part of the problem there is that we feel that we could have saved three hours worth of time if you just spent time with the homeowner on the phone intentionally. The important thing is and when a homeowner calls in, it's important to get a full understanding of what they're looking for from you. So let me give you an example. You know, uh, my fiance recently got into a car accident and when she got into a car accident, she knew that she had to get estimates from body shops. Yeah. And she said, I need to go out and get three estimates from three different body shops. And I said, well, why do you want three estimates? She said, well, that's just what I'm supposed to do. You're that's what we all do. You're supposed to get three estimates. Exactly. And I, I don't know where this myth came from, this right. idea that you need three estimates. But in our business, sometimes insureds think they have to get multiple estimates from multiple contractors to get a full understanding. Right. They also believe that our estimate may be different from the insurance companies. Now, we use Xactimate, we use standard price lists, we don't, we don't change anything. So uh, what we do, one of the first things that we make sure an insured understands is that assuming we call out for the same work that the insurance company is calling out for, right you will get an identical estimate to what the insurance company has provided you because we use industry published standard price lists, no difference. The other thing you have to understand is that if there isn't a difference, then we are going to charge the amount of the insurance company's settlement for the work to be done. Now let me explain why that is an important distinction and story to tell the homeowner. A lot of the times, they are calling companies with the goal of getting that $5,000 worth of work done yeah. that the insurance companies paid them for, for $4,000. Now, what's wrong with that? Absolutely nothing. There are a lot of companies out there that would love to do $5,000 worth of work for $4,000 because they're slow or because their margins are really small and they're, they're okay. They work out of their garage. They work, exactly. Yeah. They're okay. They don't have workers comp, you know, whatever, yeah. whatever. Yeah. And I'm not judging, right? Like whatever. You have your business set up the way that you have your business set up. There are companies out there that are willing to do that. We have decided 
we're not one of them. Right. And so we just make sure, and we don't do that in a snotty or a, you know, a prideful, like jerky way. We just say, look, we charge insurance company money to do insurance company work, and that's it. Yeah. You know, there's not, there will not be any, in fact, you're gonna come out of pocket if you're a deductible. And we tell them that up front on that first phone call. Now, some of you, when I tell you that, are gonna be scared to talk about money over the phone. Why, why is that? Yeah. Why is that? Right? Psychology. That's why. Now, really quick, I want to touch on this because, you know, Tim nailed it. You know, in 2008, 9, and 10 even, you had a lot of people cashing out. You had people saying, you know, I'm going to take this $10,000 check and we're going to do the work ourselves or we're going to have our cousin do it because he's only going to charge us 6000 And, you know, the reality is if that was me and, you know, one of my spouse's or my spouse had lost her job, which one in of this many spouses. <laughs> That's terrible. <laughs> so in, in this case, his spouse lost her job and he says, we need to save money. I get it. Like I would do the exact same thing. So, I mean, if I'm in their shoes, like I totally understand it. However, what we're saying now is this, and I want to make sure that we, we set this up properly. We are servants. That's what we do. We are here to serve the customer and to serve the client. And that's why we continue to get repeat business. And it comes through in our messaging. And it comes through in our interaction one-on-one -on -one with the homeowner. So when we're giving you some of these tips and techniques, please don't take it from the standpoint of, you know, we're just rude. <coughs> Excuse me. Don't take it from the standpoint of we're just rude or we're just aggressive. That's not the case. This is business when it's all said and done. Your time is valuable and so is the company's time, right? And so what we do is, you know, we get on the phone with a homeowner and we start to understand what they're going through. You know, it's the first thing that we do is we say, hey, Mrs. Jones, I understand this, this, and this based on what you told my staff. Would you do me a favor? I know you've told this story probably a hundred times already, but would you please let me know what happened at your claim? How did this happen? and listen to their story and listen to what's happening and put yourself in the place of where they are and begin to make mental note of how you can connect. Because when we're making this, this phone call and we're having this conversation, it's about building rapport with this person. Because at this point, you still don't know if they're gonna be a client or not. So you build rapport and then you begin to ask deeper and deeper questions and after about 15 minutes, you figure out whether you're a good fit for each other or not. Yeah, and I think that if this is done with the proper intention and you really feel, you know, as cheesy as this sounds, you feel love in your heart for this insured and what they're going through, I think that that will be clear when you communicate that we may not be the right fit for you. That is a technique I learned as a salesperson a very long time ago, is to actually use those words sometimes. I don't know whether or not we're going to be a good fit. Are you gonna be okay with me telling you that if that's the case? Yeah. And, and you know, that takes a lot of people back. Like, okay, yeah, of course. You know, I'd rather know up front. You know, we don't want, we don't want to take their time. What happens is, is this process that my first sales trainer, he used to call mutual mystification. You know, you go out there, you write your estimate, and you think you're there to write this estimate because the insured wants to hire you. And the insured thinks you're there to write an estimate so that they can save $2,000 by going to their cousin down the street. And you're both there not understanding what is going on there. It's kind of like a first date. She's there for the drinks and you're there because <laughs> you think something else is going to happen, right? So you, you've got to understand that we each bring our own agenda and if you are a great salesperson, you are going to start being more concerned with their agenda than you are with theirs. See, you're so filled up with this idea that I'm out there to write this estimate and get this job, that you're forgetting that this person also has a brain and a heart and a soul and they've got goals and objectives that they're trying to right. accomplish. And you've got to put yourself in their shoes. That's like third grade wisdom yeah. but it rings so true in the sales world. You've got to put yourself in your insured shoes. When I ask salespeople, you know, there's three answers, yes, no, and maybe. What's the best? Everyone says yes. What's the second best? A lot of people will say maybe. I hate maybes, and I'll tell you why. On a third call, guess what a maybe becomes? A maybe, 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 maybe. Exactly, it becomes no. a maybe, and then like eight <laughs> calls later, it finally becomes a no. 
So I, I like no's up front. I like hearing that. Go up front. for the no. So you might hear someone say, I've got a brother in law, I've got a cousin, I've got a primo, whatever. They're going to do it with a primo. Them. A primo. Primo. <laughs> so I've got a cousin. I don't need you. Uh, thank you very much. I just want the estimate. Okay, cool. It's not for me. Thank you very much. But then you might get a maybe. And so sometimes you'll get someone that says, Look, I don't know for sure if I want to go out with you or go with you. <laughs> Either way, uh, I don't know if I want to go with you. I'm calling out three companies. When I say that to that is great. So how are you going to make your decision? Just so I know up front, like I know, like what question should I be ready to answer? Because some people are looking for the cheapest company, and I and yep. maybe that's you. Maybe that is the you've decided to be the the least expensive company on the block. The and that's Walmart, good. perfect. Go be Walmart. That's you. You're going to be successful. I mean, Walmart is making <laughs> billions. There's nothing wrong with Walmart. So if you're the cheapest, great. But at least you know up front what they're expecting. Maybe they want quality references. If you're in the service business, great. You know, okay, I've got a good chance at this. Right. And maybe they say, look, I'm just going to go with the person I trust most. Well, at least I know the rules of engagement going into this sale, what they're going to want from me in order to get it. So I'll go out and I'll say, look, okay, say you want service, you want references. I come out, I provide you three great references. The estimate looks good. You call my references. They love me. They tell you I'm the best thing since sliced bread. Where do we go from there? What do you see as the next step? And this is all over the phone, by the way. Yeah. Right? And this is all over the phone when Tim is is really setting this up for the home. We're saying, okay, let's fast forward and you get what you want because I'm going to provide it for you. Now what happens? Yep. I want to make sure that people understood that. And so if the insured says, uh, then I would hire you. Okay, great. Now we're in business. We're going to get to work. No issues. If the insured says, well, I'd still like think about it. I don't know. Da, da, da. Okay. So we, we've got some drilling down to do here. This is really important. I want to give you a warning that this only works if you build sufficient rapport before getting to this place. It's a you must, need, man. You need trust with the homeowner. That's where that conversation where you start the call really is paramount yeah. and really connecting with them. You know, um, not to critique OP live here, but you know, when I say my daughter sleeping on the couch, you know, the, the important thing, if I'm an estimator, I say, I'm so sorry. How's she doing with that? That must be really tough for you. You know, are, are you going to get get her back in the bedroom after the dry down stuff? <coughs> Is there anything we can do? Have you talked to the adjuster about a hotel? You know, express some concern there. Do what you can to build trust because that is only going to make your job easier when you're trying to create that upfront agreement so you know the rules of engagement for that initial uh, inspection. But very true. Building rapport is crucial, especially for the next step. Absolutely. For scheduling that upfront agreement, making that happen, that is going to be critical. And then you go out and do the inspection according yeah. to the rules of engagement. Now, sometimes you'll go out there and the insured will all of a sudden forget that they promised you the deductible. Sometimes you have to remind them. You have to say, now, uh, and you dummy up. You know, one of my favorite sales mottos is one? Columbo. Yeah, he'd do one of those. Uh, you know, Columbo always acted kind of dumb, right? He was like, uh, he didn't, he pretended like he didn't know what was going on. Yeah. And really, he knew exactly what he was doing. And so you say, you know, I, I don't understand. I, I When we talked over the phone, we, we talked about this and I, I'm just not understanding. Did I do something wrong? Is everything okay? I don't get it. And you dummy up and you put yourself in that vulnerable spot. And you'll find that your homeowner will come to your rescue. You know, they'll say, "Oh no, 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 no! It's okay. It's not." You know, and that's not intended to be manipulative, it, but it is intended. You genuinely don't understand. I don't understand what happened here and why we're not following the agreement. But once you have that, you have a clear blueprint for where you're headed. The problem you're going to have is that sometimes you're going to do this with an insured, and they're going to not let you come out to do the estimate. And you're going to blame me thinking that I just cost you a sale. Yeah. But in actuality, what we did was we just saved you three hours. Yeah. And so to, to wrap this up, some of the techniques that we just talked about um, are uncomfortable to do. They really are. Yep. You know, when I went through this training to do this, uh, Tim and I actually, you know, one of the reasons why we connect so well is we took this uh, sales training course. We didn't know that we each took it. It was at different times, but this was one of the topics is how to close in a phone call, right? How to pre-close. And so these techniques are there. They do work, but you have to be able to try it so you can work your muscle. Many of you will try one little part and not go through fulfillment and you'll give yourself this false belief that it doesn't work because 
I've already tried it, and so now my belief is it doesn't work, so it doesn't happen. I mean, I went to the gym that one time. I didn't get abs. What's up? Try these different things. Anything that you've heard today, give it a try. That's what we tell our salespeople. Try what you learn. And it's, you know, if you're not getting what you want, it's because you are not committed to experimenting. Experiment. You learn something new, apply it right away. Figure out a way, like right now, can you make a phone call right now and test some of these strategies? If you can, great, then do it. If you cannot, then schedule it for tomorrow and say, look, on this day, tomorrow, I'm gonna make this call and it's gonna be this strategy or listen or watch this video one more time before you make the call and do it. And that's gonna get you into the place of now you're beginning to grow. If you're stuck and you're not making progress, it's because you're not open to growth. It's because you're not open to growth. So in this case, I think we've got it wrapped up. Anything else you want to close with? Never stop growing. Peace. Hey guys, OP and I wanted to thank you for watching our inaugural episodes by offering a limited number of free 15-minute two-on-one mastery sessions where we'll answer any one restoration industry question you have about sales, estimating, operations, or anything else. Go to restorationmastery.com forward slash 15 minutes for more information.